So let's go ahead and talk about some graph transformations. How about y equals 3 to the x minus 1? Well, this is what all the exponential functions look like. They have this general shape here, shoop, like that, with a y-intercept of 1. And then if we look at this minus 1, that's going to shift the graph down one unit. So keep the axes where they are, but take all the points in blue and shift them down one unit. Well, this y-intercept that was at 1 should go down one unit as well, right? So this minus 1 is a shift down by one unit. The y-intercept used to be at 1, so it makes sense that the y-intercept is now at 0. The horizontal asymptote used to be the x-axis. In other words, the line y is equal to 0. So now it makes sense shifting that asymptote down one unit. The horizontal asymptote is the line y is equal to negative 1. Let's also graph g of x is equal to 2 to the x plus 4. Again, this is what all the exponential functions look like. They just look like that. Um, just on paper, y equals 2 to the x versus y equals 3 to the x. It's hard to actually accurately depict the difference. But, you know, so here, here's like y is equal to 2 to the x, and then 4 units up, shifted 4 units up. You have a graph that looks like this. So uh, since the y-intercept over here in y equals 2 to the x used to be a 1, now if you shift that 4 units up, the new y-intercept is 5. And then um, the horizontal asymptote used to be y is equal to 0, so the new horizontal asymptote is y is equal to 4. Uh, how about graphing y is equal to 4 to the negative x? Well, here's y is equal to 4 to the x, and then replacing x with negative x, so this is a this is a horizontal transformation that's going to flip horizontally, and you'll have a graph that looks like this. What about um, graphing y is equal to negative e to the x? Well, this is y is equal to positive e to the x, and this minus sign in front is going to be a vertical shift, so the graph would be flipped upside down, and the graph would look like that. Now, let's solve uh, x squared e to the x minus e to the x equals 0. So follow the order of operations. You can't do e to the x minus e to the x first. Um, let's factor out an e to the x. So we'll have e to the x times a quantity x squared minus 1 equals 0. Now we can apply the zero product property. So e to the x equals 0 or x squared minus 1 equals 0. Now we can attack each of these equations individually. First of all, e to the x equals 0 has no solution because on the left you have e to the x. Now the values of e to the x is given by the range of the function f of x equals e to the x. And the range of that function is 0 to infinity, excluding the number 0, right? So the values of e to the x are only going to be numbers that are bigger than 0. So e to the x is never actually going to equal 0. That's why there's no solution. So this is funky, but we're solving an equation by appealing to uh, looking at a function that we're cooking up on the spot and saying that function has range bigger than 0. So there's no way that the value of e to the x is equal to 0. The other equation is x squared minus 1 equals 0. And if you add 1 to both sides and square root both sides, you'll get x equals plus or minus 1. Now, um, exponential functions are of the form a to the x, but more generally, exponential functions are the form f of x equals k times a to the x. And so we, we let's do this. Let's find an exponential function whose graph goes to the point 0, 2 and the point 3, comma 10. So look, if, the, if you have y is equal to k times a to the x, then we just need to find what k is and what a is. So let's go ahead and use, first of all, the point 0, 2, because there's a 0 there. This is going to be nice. Plugging in 0 for x and 2 for y, we're going to have 2 is equal to k times a to the 0. Now, a to the 0, remember, raising something to the 0th power means, so a to the 0th is 1. So k times 1, um, so you have here 2 is equal to k, or k is equal to 2. So now updating how we have this, now that we know that k is equal to 2, we have y is equal to 2 times a to the x, and we can now use the information from the other point we have. Use the information from the point 3 comma 10, and then now let's solve for a. So let's see, take 10 equals 2 times a to the third, and divide both sides by 2, so you'll have 5 is equal to a to the third. Now let's cube root both sides, so a is equal to the cube root of 5. By the way, you can also write that as 5 to the 1 third power. OK, so our function, now that we know what k is and now that we know what a is, f of x is equal to k, which was 2, uh, times a, which was cube root of 5, raised to the x power. As a reminder, please complete the interactive question, which is a review on functions.